Fallout New Vegas is my personal favourite game in the series, and the one that rarely got me hooked. But it's missing one thing that I love in the newer games, and that's the ability to build a settlement in your own corner of the wasteland and truly get immersed in one of the coolest areas within this universe. Luckily, this game has an amazing modding community, and I just so happened to find a mod to scratch this itch, with Nipton Rebuilt. So now, I can take a town that's been destroyed in a bloody conflict, become the mayor, and rebuild it slowly into a thriving town in the wasteland through hard work and earning a truckload of caps. There's only one man for a mayor's job in a recent war zone, and that's Sheriff Lonesome Rhodes. Down on his luck and needing a new adventure away from California, he made the journey to Nevada after hearing about the legendary New Vegas Strip. And we begin our adventure on day one as he arrives in the small town of Good Springs. Spending the day learning about Dust Brahman from a strange old cowboy, and relaxing in the local bar. And that's where he hears about the unfortunate fate of a small nearby town called Nipton being completely destroyed. Day two, and looking for adventure, Rhodes leaves the town of Good Springs and heads in the direction of Nipton. On the way encountering a couple of criminals who are easily taken out of his trusty magnum, and navigating through a sandstorm in the middle of the desert, before finally arriving at the desert rest stop of Nipton, which is still in flames from the attack it endured. And it just so happens the criminals who destroyed the town are still hanging around. After pulling out his gun, Sheriff Rhodes is ready for a fight, but the Legion leave him alive to spread the word of what happened here. Hearing noises inside the town hall, he heads in to encounter a horde of trained attack dogs, dispatching them as he works his way upstairs. Eventually coming across an old Protectron, who declares us the new mayor after witnessing our heroics. All that's left now is to log onto the computer and officially register as the town's new mayor, and after I'm sworn in, take some time to review what can be done to rebuild this once great town. After a long day, deciding to relax in the office, before browsing the computer again for some entertainment. And what better way to relax with today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends, who've got some bonuses worth their waiting caps, waiting for new players who sign up with my link. Get involved in the spring hunt in Teleria by downloading Raid with the link in the description, or from the QR code, head to the Spring Hunt website, enter your Raid ID, and get searching for missing items around Misswood until the 30th of May. Not only can you earn in-game loot and legendary champions, but if you've got your luck stat as high as our good friend Oliver Swanick, you could win games consoles and Amazon gift cards worth $10,000. You'll also join in time for Raid Community Weeks with in-game activities and a 14-day loyalty program. Log in for 7 days between now and the 8th of July for additional bonuses, including Legendary Chronicler Adeline. I'm no Raid expert, but she's carried me through a few battles with her heels, and can put people to sleep more efficiently than a long night on the New Vegas Strip. So what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description or scan the QR code for all of those bonuses, which will get you a huge starter pack of welcome gifts including Epic Champion Tayrell, and another starter pack at level 25 that includes the Epic Rector Drath. And as an added gift, use code SPRINGHUNT24 after downloading for a nice jackpot of extra silver, which also works for existing players of the game. With everything downloaded, you can also join my clan, The Vale Plays Raiders, and help me take down clan bosses which is my personal favourite game mode, with some challenging fights against some really fun boss enemies, with all of you being able to help me topple them for some nice in-game rewards. Day 3 arrives and the town is in need of a major clean-up, so Rhodes heads out to check on the prisoners, but they're too far gone to save so puts them out of their misery. He then spends some of the caps he's saved to hire some help to put out the fires in town, and clear out the bodies and rubble to avoid any issues with disease spreading. Day 4 is an early start to try and get some cheap improvements made, but everything costs a lot of caps and supplies. With just enough money to refurbish a small house, Rhodes gets the supplies and gets to work. By the end of the day, the board's been taken down, some furniture's been salvaged, and an odd woman who survived the attack has moved back in, with some domesticated rad roaches as pets. I don't think I'll be visiting here again anytime soon. Day 5 is an early start to head for Good Springs on a supply run, selling every piece of loot I could carry for caps to repair the town, and here in the town is about to be attacked, decide to hang around. Day 6, and I get to help in the town deal with its bandit problem, speaking to Ringo at the gas station, and then convince Sunny Smiles and the other townsfolk to get together to fight back the threat. Getting Trudy ready to jump into the action, getting armour from Chet in the shop, and medical supplies from Doc Mitchell, and finally, at high noon, the bandits appear in the distance as the town gets set up for its last stand. The next 20 minutes is a brutal battle, 
but this has a happy ending as all of the bandits are killed or retreat, and the friendly town of Good Springs is safe. And as a reward, I get to keep all of the loot, and even get given the key to the safe in the schoolhouse, which will all help me get the caps to fix Nipton. Day 7, and after returning to Nipton, Rhodes used the supplies he bought to set up the new general store, fixing the outside to look a bit more welcoming, adding in shelves and storage for stock, and outfitting a living quarters for a shopkeeper to use when hired. Not a bad place to shop if you ignore the dirt and flies. Day 8 is spent interviewing candidates for the new shopkeeper job, and after picking the least crazy, lending a hand to unpack the stock. Welcome to Nipton. I like what you've done with the place. Bad news, I'm currently your only customer. The only other resident sleeps all day, but we should have more residents on the way soon. And after a quick introduction, sell all of the loot from the Good Springs raid to bring up the cap balance for some more much needed town repairs. Day 9, and with survivors hearing Nipton is under new management, Rhodes gets to work on a new house, fixing up a communal dining area, a state-of-the-art kitchen, comfortable and not mould-ridden bedroom, and a lovely new bathroom. And on day 10, some interesting characters move in with a new business. Welcome to town, can I have a hot dog? Okay. Was there something I said? Looks like you've had a rough few years in the army. Thank you for your service. Just, uh, stay away from me, you smell a little bit. Day 11, and with the danger of future raids on the horizon, the day is spent refurbishing a doctor's office. Salvaging furniture for a comfortable waiting room, a kitchen which also doubles as the doctor's bedroom, and of course a state-of-the-art and pristinely clean surgery room. And on day 12, our friendly neighbouring town sends a doctor courtesy of Doc Mitchell to get the place up and running. Doc, welcome to town. Place doesn't look too sterile, I'd maybe get cleaning, but hope you enjoy your new home. Maybe change your clothes as well, doesn't look too inviting. Day 13 are wanting to encourage people to stop at Nipton on their travels, Rhodes cleans up the campsite, opening up a number of trailer homes to people needing cheap housing or a roof over their heads for a night. Of course, clearing out the pesky scorpion population to avoid any unfortunate deaths. And with the only entertainment currently being Dust Brahman Racing, repairs the playground. It's not much more exciting, but at least he tried. Day 14, and with caps running out, Rhodes decides to head to Vegas feeling lucky. Heading to Good Springs and admiring the view from the hill, before finding an odd looking collectible which might be worth some caps. After being chased by some rad scorpions, and passing a couple of folks warning of a creature called a death claw, we eventually make it to the not so lovely freeside and an opportunity to win some lucky hands of blackjack. Not before being welcomed by the friendly locals though, they seem rather feral in this part of town. Day 15, and after a rough night's sleep, head to the local shop to make some sales and then to the slightly nicer side of town to do some exploring. Not much to see apart from the nutjobs dressed as Elvis, but eventually end up in a casino. After exchanging the last of his caps, Rhodes gets to gambling, and it just so happens he's always been rather lucky. Spending the night and most of the next day winning hand after hand, until the owner seems to get a bit upset and threatens to break my legs if I don't cash out. Day 16, and with most of the morning spent gambling, Rhodes cashes out and decides to leave town before he gets in trouble but heads to the security checkpoint in the main strip to submit to a credit check, easily passing so he can visit on his next trip. Also a bit shocked to see a man gunned down in the street, but what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas I guess. And after a fun overnight stay, set off on the walk back to town to carry on the repairs. Day 17, and with Nipton becoming a popular rest stop, Rhodes sets up a small hotel in one of the abandoned buildings. With a repaired Mr Handy as the concierge, and a couple of small but extremely secure rooms, travellers can have a safe night's sleep, with a couple of home comforts like a semi-usable TV and the modern take on a hotel bathroom. Day 18, and with some spare caps and sick of sleeping in the office, Rhodes sets himself up a small living quarters in one of the abandoned buildings. With a desk to do his mayor duties and some workbenches, it's quite a nice place. And the bedroom is definitely a step up from the office couch. Just a shame the previous occupier mysteriously died after I visited. Days 19 to 21 are spent building defensive walls around town with the scrap that had been salvaged so far. With Nipton slowly becoming an attractive place to visit again, residents were worried about a repeat attack, and this should help keep the town protected. Day 22 started with more sales for the shopkeeper, getting rid of some of the loot from the previous out-of-town trips, before furnishing another house for residents to move into, 
with enough caps to outfit the spacious home with a large yet slightly dark bedroom, a nice living area, and a pristine kitchen for cooking wasteland delicacies. And some rather creepy tenants moved in. Oh god, you're creepy, aren't you? Hold on. Are you clones? Synths. Best not be synths, not welcome in this town. Day 23, and with plenty of talented people in town, Rhodes sets up a repair shop to make use of them. With outside crafting areas, a bedroom that doubles as a machine workshop which can't be good on the lungs, and a storage slash living room which hopefully the new robotic dog will enjoy. Just don't mention anything to those Elvis impersonators I borrowed them from. Day 24, and carrying on finding townsfolk jobs, Rhodes fixes up a shop for clothing. Just ignore the huge hole in the wall. With an assortment of clothes found in the rubble of town, there's a fairly large variety, and the shopkeeper also gets the very own bedroom, which isn't directly under the hole in the wall that lets every element inside. Day 25, and running low on caps, we journey to the Vegas Strip for some more gambling, taking in the sights on the first trip to the land of the rich. With a late arrival, Rhodes gets right into the fun dancing in the street and trying to impress the local ladies, before heading into Gamora for a bit of gambling, and chatting to locals in the wealthy in bar until the early hours of the morning. Day 26, and after spending the night failing miserably on the slot machines, Rhodes turns to his trusted blackjack, and proceeds to win hand after hand, getting the VIP treatment with clothes and even some 200 year old wine, before things turn a little bit sour, and I'm banned from gambling because I'm winning too easily. After cashing out, I receive a message to go over the road to the Lucky 38 for a meeting. Rhodes meets with the mysterious Mr. House, who offers him a chance to manage his casino, but well, that's turned down for now, while the repairs to Nipton are finished. But who knows, opening this establishment back up could be fun. And before leaving, find a buyer for that mysterious snow globe, netting a tidy profit on a piece of junk from the floor. Day 27, and after returning to town flush with caps and missing the bustling New Vegas Strip, Rhodes renovates an old building into a tavern, featuring a piano for live entertainment, a jukebox if the singer is terrible, and a fully stocked bar, this place should be very popular. Just need to avoid those drunken shootouts to keep profits up. Day 28, and demand for housing is up, so Rhodes fixes up another abandoned house. Probably the best in town, as it features a robo-brained chef in the kitchen, and a very nice looking living area, and a bedroom which doesn't look like a dungeon. Day 29, and it seems town is becoming popular, as raiders turn up to try and cause some trouble. They don't put up much of a fight at the gate, quickly being gunned down, but do take over the abandoned casino building. After a brutal fight which lasts hours, they're all killed, and as a positive there's plenty of goods to scavenge from them, which can be sold and reinvested in town. Day 30, and with future raider attacks a possibility, Rhodes sets up a guard post at the front of town, and deputises some brave volunteers who form the start of Nipton Police Department. We won't back down from any fight now. Day 31, and with some weaknesses in the town defence, Rhodes sets up another guard outpost on the other side of town, including a small living quarters for the latest deputies. The force is looking strong now and should hold off attacks. Day 32, and with Nipton PD continuing to grow, it needs a headquarters, so the old train terminal outside of town is repurposed. An office is set up so investigations and admin can be conducted, and a living quarters and break room is put together for rest and relaxation. And of course, it wouldn't be complete without a cell, which just so happens to house a raider who is doing some scouting for another attack. Captain, I heard you found someone sneaking around the perimeter. I'll get some answers out of him. Well, well, well. Isn't this your lucky day? Day 33, and the final repairable house is fixed up for some new tenants. This house is a little bit dirty in the rest, but it's affordable at least, and the rent is very cheap as you can split it between four people. And you can even choose a top or bottom bunk. Days 34 to 37 are a bit of a blur, but Rhodes headed to New Vegas to earn some more caps for the final repairs in town, which turned out to be a bit chaotic. First heading to the tops and seeing one of the worst suits known to mankind, and then spending hours upon hours sat at the blackjack table getting extremely lucky. So lucky in fact that after clearing the casino of five figures worth of caps, we're banned. Then nearly getting shot by a fellow cowboy after nudging him as I drunkenly walked into a tree and angering the poor fellow. 
Next on the casino list was the high-end Ultra Lux, spending a ridiculous amount of time again winning hand after hand, all while being offered some very odd tastes and treats by the staff. Certainly not like the Brahmin steak I'm used to, before eventually being banned for my excessive winning. With one final night, Rhodes had an evening swim in the Ultralux Legion style baths, which was a pleasant change of pace, before getting a bit too drunk and being escorted to the drunk tank for seductively dancing in the fountain out front of the casino. Day 38, and after heading home from New Vegas with some new friends in need of housing, Rose sets them up in one of the last buildings. They did have some odd requests though. The living room and kitchen were perfectly normal, but the bedroom was a bit on the raunchier side, with some very interesting decorative features. At least the bed looks comfortable. Sleep with LaBelle for 15 caps. Are you LaBelle? Uh, LaBelle Galette. I will pass on that. There is another ghoul in town you might get along with though. Enjoy the setup. Day 39, and with the campsite booming with new visitors and residents, it needs a security upgrade. So Rhodes deputises another couple of officers and sets up a guard post on the weak point of the fence. And adds a target range so officers can keep practising their aim. Day 40, and after his long Vegas trip filled with sim, Rhodes decides to fix up the local church. It's small and probably not going to get too much use out of this town, but it'll do the job. Downside is, I'm not a very good priest to have in charge. Day 41 sees another expansion to the defences at a weak point on the back road into town, with a police force of 10 deputies and a fully functioning HQ, Nipton is set up to avoid any damage in the future. Day 42, and with the final building untouched and missing New Vegas, Rhodes has an idea. Why not build a casino? And so with a couple of signs to encourage tourists, it's official and very nice inside, featuring a small bar, a cashier for gambling, and a few tables to spend your hard-earned caps. It's a nice addition to the town's economy. Day 43, and after a night of embarrassing himself in front of the townsfolk, Rhodes has completed the town repairs. Now a thriving outpost in the Mojave for travellers to stop and rest, and a safe place for people to call home. But with a taste of opening a casino, and missing the New Vegas Strip, maybe now is the right time to consider the offer from Mr House, and become a full-time casino manager.